All right, welcome back, folks. We have more or less a complete sign up, uh, login, user interface. And some of you are asking the very fair question of how long is this, this project going to take? Uh, how far have we come? Where are we going next? Uh, all good stuff. So I think what we'll do is tomorrow is Sunday, for me at least. Uh, and so we'll, we'll spend tomorrow's video kind of checking in on this uh, UML diagram, uh, figure out kind of what our minimum viable product is for this portion, and start to think about what's ahead and put some timelines on the steps that we'll take just to kind of start to push this into a uh, more of a real development schedule. It is an educational app, but we can also learn from kind of putting timelines on it and trying to hold ourselves to the standards that uh, a normal application would be held to. So we'll do that tomorrow. Today, what I'd like to do is get the Firestore portion of the uh, user interface set up. So if you recall from this diagram, when we uh, sign up or log in, both lead to authentication and then in the background, after authentication, we go to Firestore and we check for an existing user record. And if that doesn't exist and it's a signup process, we create it. Uh, if they're logging in and they don't have an account, then we redirect them back to, to sign in. So we need to set up Firestore and Firebase authentication to be able to, to make that jump uh, to that logic. And so what I'd like to do first is define a model for our user. So in our SRC folder, what I'd like to do is create a models folder. And we're going to create a user.dart file in there. And that's going to be a class of user. And so I think what I'm going to have for starters here is just the user ID uh, and their email. And we can add more fields in later uh, as we need to. But let's just start with user ID and email. And that should be a, a string up here too. And we need a constructor. So we'll do a name constructor. So we'll do curly braces and this dot email and this dot user ID. And then because we're dealing with Firestore, we want to be able to take our Dart object and turn it into a map. And we want to be able to take maps and turn them into Dart objects. And that's how we're going to interact with Firestore. Firestore deals in maps. Our application is going to want to deal with Dart objects. And so we need to convert them uh, in and out of those formats. So let's start with the to map function. So we'll give it a string key and dynamic values. And we'll call it to map. And we will just return a user ID property from our user ID from our object and email from from our email property. And then the other direction is user dot, we'll just call it from Firestore. And we'll take in a map with string keys and dynamic values. We'll call that value Firestore. And then we'll map the properties to the fields in Firestore. So we're going to have a user ID property, and that's going to come from Firestore bracket user ID and email is going to come from email Firestore email and semicolon as the last field that's it for our model so let's build a service so in SRC we're going to build a folder called services and in there we're going to have a service for Firestore so it'll be our service for uh, getting in and setting our user records and also any other records uh, that we're going to be setting in Firestore. So we'll create Firestore underscore service dot dart. And it'll be a class with Firestore service. We want to create an instance of our database at the top. So that is Firestore. We'll call it underscore DB. And we'll set that equal to Firestore.instance. 
and we will want to import Firestore from the package like that and so we want two functions here we want to be able to set a user and we are going to be wanting to fetch a user so we'll do the set first so that'll be future void of add user and we are going to pass in our dart object which is a user so we'll pull in that model all right, so we want to return underscore db dot collection, and we need to give our collection a name, which user seems like a good one. And we could add to the collection, but instead of adding directly to the collection, we're going to reference a document so that we are giving it the ID that we want uh, it to use for the reference. And so we're going to use the user ID that we pass in as the reference, document reference. And then we're going to set data. And we will do user dot to map. So we are going to take the user that we pass in, which is our Dart object, and we're going to call on our model to change it to a map. And we are going to put that with a document reference of our user ID so that when we have a user ID, which we're going to get from Firestore, or Firebase actually, Firebase authentication, uh, we can reference it as the document reference and we can lightning quick locate that that record all right that's our add user so let's do our fetch user so that's a future of type user and we fetch user and we will do it from a string which is the user id so like i said up here we put the document reference as the user id and then we can get it with db.collection users and the document is going to be the user ID. Uh, we can stream this, we can do a future, and I'm going to do a future which is dot get. Then, and it nicely fills in this, uh, I'm going to expand this a little bit, fills in the rest for you. So we get a value back which is a document snapshot. So I'm actually going to call it snapshot. And then with this, I want to take our user model and call on that because we have a function that will turn the map from Firestore into our Dart object, which is our from Firestore. And for that, we want to pass it the snapshot, but not just the snapshot. We want to pass it the snapshot data. And that is it for our Firestore service for getting and setting the user. So that went pretty quick, so why don't we keep going and get Firestore ready to receive that information. So if we go to console.firebase.google.com and go into your project, and if you don't have one yet, uh, that's episode four, I believe. I'll put a card to it up there where we set up the Firebase uh, project to back this, this application. And we want to do two things. We want to go first to authentication. And we want to make sure that the email password sign-in method is enabled. So if this is disabled, which it will be when you first start, make sure you go in here and enable it. And then secondly, you're going to want to create a Firestore database, which I have already done. Uh, if you do, you can create it with production. You don't have to, uh, to set up test. But once you do that, go into rules, and we're going to want to update our write to if request.auth.uid is not equal null. And then you want to set that. So what that will do is you must be authenticated in order to write to the database. Eventually we'll do the same thing for read, uh, but we'll just leave that as allow right now. But a lot of people, were, sometimes you'll set the rules as completely open for starters, but our application is going to authenticate and then write to the user database. Might as well start out with secure rules right up front. Alright, so if you've got that done, then let's actually hook up our sign up button, create an account, and create a record in our database. I think that would be uh, a nice little achievement for us to have 
at this point. We've put a lot of effort into this app. It would be nice to uh, to see something happen out there in the cloud as a result of a, of a click in our application. So to do that, we're going to want to hook something, uh, an action up to the sign up button. So let's give our button widget the option of being passed in a function to execute uh, on pressed. So if we go to widgets and we go to button, up here at the top in our constructors, we have button text, we have button type. Let's add a final void function on pressed. And then down here in our constructor, we'll add a comma there. We will do this dot on pressed, and it's an optional. And then we scroll down and find our on tap method. And we created ourselves some space here. If the button is not disabled, we have an on tap method. We have nothing going on inside here. So we will say, Uh, actually, I need to do widget on pressed. So if there's an on press method, execute it on tap. Okay, so we'll be able to pass a function to our button, and we're going to need a function to actually pass to our sign up page. So let's go into our auth block. So if we go to blocks and we go to auth block, let's create a function to attach to the sign up button. So down below transformers, we'll create a new area for functions. And we will create one called sign up email. And in there just for debugging, I'm going to print signing. I'm going to try to do it signing up with username and password. And I'm going to do a try catch block so that if we get an error back, we can do something with it. So we'll do catch error. Uh, and if we get an error, I just want to print it for now. What I want to try is I want to try creating the user account and then I want to try adding it to Firestore. So let's bring in auth and firestore so if we come up to the top and we do a final uh, firebase auth underscore auth firebase auth dot instance and a get an equal sign in between there and a Final Firestore service underscore Firestore service is equal to an instance of our Firestore service, which we just created. So then down here in our sign up function, we can call for an auth result, which we'll call auth result. And we will await underscore auth. We got all kinds of options here we can do with Firebase auth, but we're going to create a user with an email and password. And so the email we're going to pass is underscore email dot value dot trim. I'm going to trim it again. Those, those uh, spaces tend to sneak in there. And then for password, same thing there. We're going to do password value dot trim. This is going to need to be an async function. So we'll add the async keyword. Uh, and in our auth result, this is going to create the username and the password. It's also going to log us in. So we're going to get back a user. And that user is going to have a user ID. So let's create a variable called user and we will set it equal to a new user with user ID 
of auth result dot user dot uid and then we need an email which we can get uh, we can actually get from the auth result we can also get from email value dot trim again we need to import the user type Say we go to models user dot dart. There we go. And now we can pass that user to Firestore. So our Firestore service, we will add a user and we will add this user that we just created right there. And there is our function. We should do uh, something more meaningful eventually with the print error, but that'll do for now. So if we go to screens and we go to sign up and we find our button, which is our third stream builder down, we added a button text, we've added a button type. If we go after the disabled and the comma, we can see we now have another option, which we added, which was on pressed. And so we can give this a function and we're going to give it the auth block and it's going to be the function that we just added, which is sign up email. And we don't want the parentheses. We just want to pass the function, not an instance of the function. We can save that. And moment of truth, we will go make sure you're on the sign up page. Add a valid email. Come up with a password that's a minimum of eight characters. Click sign up. And I shouldn't have shrunk that because can't see the console. We can see signing up with username and password. So if I go back to Firebase and I go to authentication, I can see that I have a new user, which is andy@example.com, signed in today with a user ID. I go to database and we have a user's collection with a record which has my email and the user ID. So we did it. It's nice to see our app actually communicating with the cloud after all of that work. So I hope you feel good about that. So like I said, tomorrow we'll come back and we'll step back a little bit and kind of look at the big picture and where we're going. Thanks so much for watching. If you are enjoying this, please make sure you subscribe, you like the video, let me know that you're, you're enjoying it. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.